And we're back taking a look out, of the, out the window. Dang, it is hot out there. Hotter than biscuits fresh out of the oven, Matthew. Here's a question that I think a lot of folks are thinking about as they look out their windows. What about the role of climate change in all this? Hard to believe that it's not connected. Let's go to Chief Meteorologist Matt Safino for that. Yeah, great question, Pat, and a good point. I was thinking about this too, going, we all remember the heat dome two years ago in June of 2021, right? When Portland absolutely crushed its former all-time record high. When we hit 116, remember those three days, we went 108, 112, 116. So let's pretend for a minute that that never happened, okay? Let's just erase that from our memories if possible. Just, just bear with me here on that thought for just a second. If that had never happened, today would be Portland's all-time hottest day ever. That's how hot it was today and how, you know, unlikely that these days are. Because remember, the previous all-time hottest day, you got to go back to 1981. So it was a long standing record that got crushed in 2021 and would have gotten beaten again today, except for the heat wave back then. So the map I'm showing you right here is something put together by the folks at Climate Central called the Climate Shift Index. And what it does is it looks at historical data from NASA and NOAA, puts it all together and teases out the impact of climate change. And what you're left with is an index zero through five, positive, zero through five, negative, show you how likely said event, in this case our heat wave, would be with climate change. And when you look at our map right now, all of Western Oregon is in the deep red, meaning this event, this heat wave, five times more likely because of climate change. Doesn't mean you can't have heat waves, and we didn't have heat waves pre adding CO2 to our atmosphere, but it's five times more likely now because of what we've done to change the climate here. So that's one look at how likely these events are becoming because of the human impact on climate. Hey Matt, before you go on, does yes, that sir. mean it's gonna be more frequent in the future? Yes, the frequency and the intensity both expected to be increasing in terms of, hot, uh, of heat waves and not just heat waves, but all kinds of extreme weather, be it fire, be it hurricanes, floods, all of that, we're seeing our weather become more extreme. We may not end up getting more rain per se, but we'll get it in more intense bursts, which of course can lead to flooding. That's where the research has taken us with climate change, Pat. So that was an excellent question as well. And yes, we are more likely to see hot days like this. I mean, just in the last two years, since 2021, we've broken our previous all-time record high temperature four times. So again, uh, hopefully that gives you a little perspective on that. So the other thing that we've been tracking really back in July, because July was the hottest month ever. We had a lot of uh, talk about this, a lot of press about how July was the hottest month ever on planet Earth. Well, when you look at the year so far, not the month of July, but the entire year of 2023, we are on record to have one of the five hottest years on record. We'll zoom in on this a little bit. What you're looking at is zero is the baseline. So this is the difference above or below average. There are some lines below average, but most are above. And the five hottest years have all been since 2016. 2016 still on record as the hottest year ever, followed by, I believe, 2020 there, then 2019 to 2017. But look where 23 is so far, and we're only a little over halfway through the year on track to join these other years. And again, one of the points here is that they're all happening lately. So answers your question that you just asked, Pat, is it becoming more likely? Well, certainly in terms of the global temperatures, yes, we're seeing that happen as well. So today, 108, again, that is our hottest August day ever. And the only reason it's not our hottest day ever is because we had that heat dome two years ago, right? 102 Pendleton, 105 Salem, Medford and Troutdale both hit 110 for the hottest spots in the state. So it's also our hottest day since the heat dome and we hit 108 today, of course. Hottest August day ever, as I mentioned. And then the other thing too, Pat, that perhaps doesn't get enough attention are the very, very warm nights. Now, last August, we set a record for August with our warmest night ever on the 18th when it never dropped below 73. We probably won't drop below 73 tonight. So both the days are getting hotter, but the overnight lows are also getting hotter. And that's very problematic when you don't cool off very much. It also gives you a higher springboard for the next day because you're starting from a higher point.
Sure. Yeah. It makes you really feel for anybody who doesn't have air conditioning. I mean, we've got one in the window at our house uh, and yeah. for our, our reporters and photogs who are working so hard out in the heat. So everybody who works outside. So it's really important Absolutely. to keep them in mind. Also, check on your neighbors, especially the elderly, if they don't have air conditioning or, you know, a basement at least to go down and get cool. And, and some of the some of the health experts, Pat's are actually telling people that when you check on your neighbor, it's not just good enough to ask them like, hey, how you doing? Because you may not get the exact answer. They're actually suggesting that if it's OK with everybody, that you actually touch their skin and make sure they don't feel too hot. So again, just keep track of your friends and neighbors. Yeah, great advice. Thank you, Matt.